moving right along into J15, which is factor, factor, factor polynomials, um, specifically focusing on the AC method here. So in the last video, we talked about taking out a greatest common factor. This is always, always, always our first step, right? Our second step is then to factor it based on how many terms it had. So we looked at grouping yesterday, right? Anytime it had four terms, we looked at grouping. Today, what we're gonna look at is what happens when we have three terms. When we have three terms, we're gonna use the AC method, which um, utilizes something we call the sum product chart, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some examples. There is a description um, of how to work through this method. I'm not gonna read through that. You can read through that on your own if you need to go back and revisit this. I'm just gonna show you by example, okay? So we have three terms, so we know we're gonna use the AC method or the sum product chart, okay? Same thing. I call it the sum product method. All right, um, first thing we look for always, no matter what, is the greatest common factor. And if I look, all three terms do not have anything in common, right? So there is no GCF on this one, or you can write none, whatever. Just so you know, you're always looking for a GCF first, okay? Then the way that we're gonna factor this is what I'd really like to do is I'd really like to turn this from three terms into four terms because if I can write it as a four terms, then I can do the grouping method that we went over on the last video. So what I'm gonna look at doing is replacing this middle coefficient or this middle term with two terms. So I wanna replace it with maybe like negative six and negative one. Maybe I can replace it with negative three and negative four, something to where it still adds up to negative seven, right? So that, that middle coefficient tells me what my sum needs to be. What it needs to add up to is negative seven, okay? But I also need to end up with a 10 out here. I gotta make sure that when I do this, it's not gonna screw up the polynomial I already have. Okay, so the way that we come up with our product is we look at our first coefficient and our last coefficient. Now right here, there's not a coefficient written. So anytime there's not a number in front of the x squared, this is an implied one. Okay, we're, we're assuming that's one x squared. So our product is the um, product of our first coefficient times our last coefficient. So one times 10 equals 10. So I wanna come up with two numbers that I can use to replace this negative seven that multiplies to 10 that I can combine to negative seven, okay? So things that multiply to 10 would be like 10 and one or five and two, right? So 10 and one is not gonna be able to be combined to get seven, but five and two is if I make them both negative, right? If I do negative five minus two, that will give me a negative seven. And also negative five times a negative two gives me the positive 10. So I found the pairing that I need, yay, <laughs> right? So now that I have the pairing that I need, what I wanna do is I wanna re- use these numbers, right, to replace this middle term. So notice the middle term is labeled x. So when I put these two numbers in to replace the seven, I need to make sure I label them with x. So I still have my x squared that I had out front, but instead of writing negative seven x, I'm gonna put in these two numbers. So I have negative five x minus two x plus 10. So all I did was take the two numbers from my chart and replace my middle term with them because now I have four terms and now I can do grouping, which is what we already know how to do from the last video, right? So out of the first two terms, they have an X in common. If I take the X out, X squared divided by X leaves me with just a single X and five X divided by X, sorry, rather, negative 5x divided by x leaves me with a negative 5, okay? So remember when we do grouping, we always want our leftovers to match. So whenever I take out a greatest common factor over here, I'm really hoping to be left with x minus 5 so that these will match, right? So I look at what 2 and 10 have in common. Well, they're both divisible by 2, but notice I have a negative term and a positive term and I want to end up with a positive and then a negative. So I need the signs to flip also. 
So instead of taking out a positive 2 for my common factor, I'm going to take out a negative 2. Okay? All right. So now I can see that we have a common factor. Common factor. All right. So now I can take that out of both terms. So if I take out what they have in common, which is x minus 5, then what they have left with is an x minus 2. And that is how we factor a trinomial. Okay, so quick little refresh, and we'll go over another one, is we take the middle coefficient to be our sum. We take the first and the last multiplied together to be our product. We determine which two numbers satisfy both of these stipulations. And then we just replace that middle term with our new numbers so that we can group. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, so on this one, first thing I look for always, always, always is a greatest common factor. And I can see by looking at these three terms that they're all divisible by 10, right? So I want to start by dividing every term by 10. So I'm going to go ahead and put my 10 out here because that's what I'm taking out. That's what I'm dividing off. And then in parentheses, I'm going to write what's left from each term once I've divided them all by 10. First term should be an x squared. Second term should be negative 6x, and then 90 divided by 10 leaves me with a 9, okay? So now that I've taken um, the 10 out, this is the new polynomial that I need to factor, right? There's nothing I can do with the 10, but this has three terms, so this is what I'm going to use to do my chart. Don't go back to the original, okay? You've changed it, you've modified it by taking something out, so this is what I'm going to use to do my sum product chart. So now my middle coefficient is negative six. My product is my first coefficient times my last. So my first coefficient here is an implied one, right? So I'm gonna do one times nine is nine. So I need something that I can multiply, gives me a product of nine that I can combine or sum to negative six. So for 9, I could do 9 times 1, or I could do 3 times 3, right? 9 and 1 does not give me 6. 3 and 3 does, but if I need it to be a negative 6, I would have to do negative 3 minus 3, right? They would both have to be negative, which is okay, because notice a negative 3 times a negative 3 still gives me a positive 9. So these are the two numbers I'm going to use to replace that middle term, okay? So I'm going to write my first um, term, which is x squared. And then instead of writing my negative 6x, I'm going to put these two numbers in. Negative 3x, negative 3x, and then plus 9. Okay. So all I did was replace that middle term with the two numbers that I got from my chart. Right. And now I can group. I'm also going to put a star over here so I don't forget to put that 10 on my answer when I'm done. Okay. All right, so out of the first pairing, I can take out an x. If I divide x off of both of those terms, I'll be left with an x and a negative 3. And then out of the second pairing, they have a 3 in common, right? But I want their leftovers to match this, which means I need a positive and then a negative. And right now I have a negative and then a positive. So I need the signs to change. So instead of taking out a positive 3, I'm going to take out a negative 3. So when I divide both of these terms by negative 3, negative divided by a negative leaves me with a positive x, and a positive 9 divided by a negative 3 leaves me with a negative 3. Okay. So now notice again I have this common factor. Common factor. Okay. So once I have a common factor, I can take that common factor out and write what's left over. So if I take this out of each term, notice the first one I'm left with an x, second one I'm left with a negative 3. So x minus 3. Okay. And then don't forget to put your greatest common factor back on the front. So in my math lab, they will let you write this as 10 times x minus 3 times x minus 3, or you can write it as 10 times x minus 3 quantity squared to imply that you have two copies of that quantity. Okay, so either one of these will be accepted. Okay, all right, let's look at one more and then I'll have y'all try some. 
So this next one, again, first step always, always, always is to look for a greatest common factor. If I look at these, I see that they're all divisible by three. So that's my greatest common factor. So I'm gonna start by taking the three and dividing it off of every single term. When I do that, I'll be left with two X squared minus one X minus 21, okay? So again, I've modified it now because I've taken off this greatest common factor, right? So now that I've taken that off, what's inside here is what I'm going to use to, um, to do my chart, right? So middle coefficient is negative 1. That's my sum. My product is my first coefficient, which is 2, times my last coefficient, which is negative 21, which means that my product is negative 42. So I need something that multiplies to negative 42 that combines to negative 1, okay? 2 and 21 wasn't it, right? Those two do not combine to negative 1. Um, something else I can multiply to get 42 would be 6 and 7. And if I want to end up with a negative 1, I would need the 7 to be negative, correct? So I have 6 minus 7, okay? So now that I have my two numbers, my two values, I'm going to replace this middle term. So I have my 2x squared out front, then I'm replacing my negative 1x with a positive 6x minus 7x minus my constant term, okay? Now that I have four terms, I can group. So out of the first pairing, they're both divisible by 2x. I write down what I'm taking out, and then in parentheses, what's left over after I divide it off. So I should be left with x plus 3. And then notice these are both negative terms, and I want to be left with positive leftovers, which means I'm going to have to factor out a negative, in this case, a negative 7, which leaves me with a positive x and a positive 3. Okay? And now these two match, right? They're a common factor. So that means I can take that out of each term. So I write what I'm taking out, which is the x plus 3, and what I'm left with, which is the 2x and the minus 7. Okay, and then don't forget your greatest common factor. So when I put my greatest common factor on, I have 3 times x plus 3 times 2x minus 7. Okay, so there are three, I believe, for y'all to try. And um, when you're ready, pause the video or if you get stuck and we'll go over them. Okay, let's take a look at number one. Number one does not have a greatest common factor. Its sum is eight and its product is one times 15, which is our leading coefficient times our last, right? So two numbers that multiply to 15 that combine to eight would be five and three. So I'm gonna replace that middle term with five X and three X and then group, okay? I can take an X out of the first pairing and a three out of the second pairing. And in both cases, I'm left with X plus five. If your remainders do not match, you did something wrong, okay? They should match. So then I can go ahead and take out that X plus five, and what I'm left with is X from the first term and three from the second term, okay? No greatest common factor, so I don't have to worry about putting anything on the front, okay? All right, let's look at the second one. <clears throat> For the second one, I have no greatest common factor again. They don't have anything in common. My sum comes from the middle coefficient, which here is negative six. <coughs> Excuse me. And my product comes from the first coefficient times the last. So eight times negative nine, which gives me a negative 72, okay? And then you can list all the, the ordered pairs for 72 um, that would give you possibly negative six. I didn't write them all out. I just wrote the one that works, which is 12 times six. I need my 12 to be negative and my six to be positive so that when I combine them, I'm left with negative six. So these are the two numbers that I'm replacing my middle term with. Then I just continue on with the grouping. So I can take a four X out of the first pairing. I can take a three out of the second pairing. And in both cases, I should be left with two X minus three. So I factor that out and it leaves me with the four X and the three from the first and the second terms, okay? All right, let's look at the last one and then I'm gonna show you a shortcut. So 
last one, we have a greatest common factor of two. So before we get started, I star it and I take two off of every term, okay? When I divide every term by two, I'm left with 5x squared plus 2x minus 3. This is the polynomial I'm going to use to do my chart, not the original, okay? So that means that my middle term is 2, that's my sum, and my product is my first coefficient times my last. So 5 times negative 3 gives me negative 15. So I need to use a 5 and a negative 3, right? So that gives me a positive 5 and a negative 3 combines to 2. So I can use those two numbers to replace my middle term. So I should have a positive 5x and a negative 3x in place of the 2x, right? And now that I have four terms, I can group. My first grouping, I can take out a 5x. My second grouping, I can take out a negative 3. And that leaves me with an x plus 1 for my leftovers. Since my leftovers match, I can factor out those leftovers. And what I'm left with is the 5x from the first term and the negative 3x from the second term, okay? And then don't forget to put your greatest common factor back on the front, okay? All right, so that is the end of this section. I do want to point out a shortcut, um, which you may or may not use. It's totally up to you. Um, but we do have a shortcut only when the leading coefficient is 1. So number three, the leading coefficient was not one, it was 10. And even after we took off our greatest common factor, our leading coefficient was five. So we can't use the shortcut on this one. Let's look at number two. Number two, the leading coefficient is eight. So we can't use the shortcut on this one. So let's go back to number one. <laughs> number one, the leading coefficient is one. Yay! So we can use the shortcut, right? So what the shortcut says is once you figure out what your pair is, the pair of numbers that you would use to replace the middle term, instead of replacing the middle term and going through the grouping process, if your leading coefficient is a one, then whatever numbers you get in your chart, those will be the numbers in your factored quantity. Meaning, we decided we needed to use a positive five and a positive three, and notice in our factored quantities, we ended up with x plus 5 and x plus 3. That's always going to be true, okay? So this one was one we could use a shortcut on. Let's see if there's any others. Just kind of scrolling backwards over the examples we did. We can't do um, the shortcut on this middle example on page 15 because um, even after I took my greatest common factor off, it had a leading coefficient of 2. So notice the numbers I got in the chart are not necessarily the numbers in here. So that doesn't, doesn't work unless the leading coefficient is a 1. But if I look at the example at the top of the page, you know, even though it started as a 10, once I took my greatest common factor off, I now have a greatest common or sorry, a leading coefficient of 1. So from here, when I determined that I could use negative 3 and negative 3 to replace this middle term, Notice what this ended up factoring into was x minus 3 and x minus 3, right? So that's kind of the shortcut is that if the leading coefficient is 1, once you determine your numbers in your chart, you can go straight to sticking them in your factored quantity and bypass the whole grouping thing, okay? Only if the leading coefficient is a 1, all right? Okay, so that is the end of J15, which is the AC method, some product way of factoring polynomials. So you should now be able to complete that assignment. If you have any questions, please let me know.